A medium or larger Dunkin' Donuts hot chocolate is now $1.99. Enjoy original, Dunkachino, or the new Almond Joy flavored hot chocolate. Yeah, Almond Joy flavor. And enjoy all that chocolate deliciousness for $1.99. So go ahead, give yourself some hot chocolate happiness for $1.99. It's like a warm and fuzzy chocolatey hug. America runs on Dunkin'. Participation may vary, limited time offer. Welcome to Define You Radio. Class is in session with your host, the Southern Belle of Bold, Valencia Griffin Wallace. Are you ready to unapologetically build your confidence, achieve goals, and design a life worth living? Learn the life lessons and strategies to define your life, money, and business. Pins and papers ready. Class is now in session. And welcome to Define You Radio Classes in Session. I am your host, the Southern Belle of Bold, Valencia Griffin Wallace. Define You is Define well, Define You period, but Define You Radio is the place to be for the tips, stories, and life lessons from those who have defined themselves. Guys, I am so excited on this Tuesday. Um is it Tuesday? We're we're almost into 2018, and I don't know. Have you guys done your vision board? I mean, are you guys ready? Better yet, are you ready for when I drop the 2018 intro? I know you guys have been dancing with this one for a while, but you know I like to change it up. So these are some things you need to think about. 2018 is around the corner. And I have so much exciting news, but I'm only going to drop just, you know, just a little bit here and there. Uh, Number one, did you guys see me on the cover of the November, um, what what you call it, edition, magazine, whichever, of Courageous Woman? Now, whoever thought I would be considered courageous? It's it's still funny. Um, Not funny, ha-ha, but funny, like, ironic that... I'm considered to be a courageous woman because I've just lived life and survived the best way I could. So make sure you guys check that out. If you're connected with me on Facebook, you'll see it there. I believe it's posted also on Define You Radio's Facebook page. Definitely check it out. It's a very interesting interview, and y'all know I'm all about real talk. An exciting project that I have going on that I do want to announce in case you are listening, because it is open to men and women and international writers. Have you walked through the valley? And some of you guys may be asking, Valencia, I don't know what that is. This is my first time listening to the show. I don't know what's going on. Well, if it's your first time listening, thank you, and you are in for a treat. But for my regular listeners, y'all know how I flow. Do you have a desire to be an author or inspire others? These are questions we need to ask ourselves. The valley is when you are at that lowest point in your life where you are just ready to give it up. Um, when I went through my valley, I was praying not to wake up. It's, I mean, the valley is like that place where you are in the fight literally for your life. I want you guys to think about that. Define You is putting together our first ever, notice my wording, anthology, entitled, what else? Through the Valley. So if you want to find out a little bit more about this truly epic project, think Chicken Soup for the Soul, okay? Y'all think that? Email to thevalley2018 at gmail.com. You can also reach out to me via Facebook or my website if we're connected. And anyway, make sure you you guys all should be connected with anything Define You. Join Define You Movement also on Facebook where we are truly a force, not just a movement. We're a force, but Define You Force doesn't sound too hot together. You never know. 2018 is around the corner. I may change things up. 
this month's series. I hope you guys have been enjoying it. Taking risk and doing the unexpected. This has truly been a great life-changing series for me. I hope you guys have learned because, you know, class is in session. So we're continuing tonight with, I don't know how to describe this beautiful woman. Um, She's a ball of energy, of honest energy. Like, I don't know how to explain it. She is a truly genuine soul. Authentic comes to mind. I've seen her grow in the time that I have known her, and I'm proud to call her a friend. And we're going to talk a little bit about her, her life, but tonight's show is unexpectedly creating a life with the beautiful Miss Ashanti Barnes. I want to go ahead and welcome her to the show. Ashanti, welcome to Define You Radio. Hi. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you. Yay. Now, I Yay. already gave you this, this killer intro about you being a, a ball of energy and everything else. So, yeah, I kind of set the bar high, but I know you are all about <laughs> setting bars and achieving them, jumping over them and going through them. Um so I have to act like I don't know you because technically I'm interviewing you. <laughs> Absolutely. So with, that gotcha. being, with that being said, Ashanti, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the Define You Radio audience? Okay. Hey, everybody. My name is Ashanti Barnes. Um, there are so many things that I can tell you, but the first thing is I just really like to um, just kind of – decrease myself so that God can increase. And at the end of the day, if you don't remember anything else, I just want you to know that I'm plain old Ashanti, just regular old me, just this little girl from around the way, this rose that grew from concrete. I give God all the glory for all the things that he has done in my life. But just because um, I need to introduce myself, I will tell you a few things about me. Um, I am an educator. I am um, local to Mississippi. I, um, you know, got my start in education um, in the classroom, and um, I started doing some things um, that just caused my um, my muscles to grow a little bit. And I am now a state educator with um, with the Department of Ed, and uh, so I'm really really excited that I get a chance to travel the state and impact. Um, the lives of others all across the great state of Mississippi. Um, So that's the education part. Currently hold a specialist degree in educational leadership um, with a concentration in curriculum and instruction. I am a dissertation away from my doctoral degree, also in education leadership, and um, I am so excited about that. I cannot wait because God showed me years ago that um, I would go far in this area. This is a an area that he has ordained me and anointed me for, and I am so grateful for this gift and this opportunity. On the other side of that, um, I am a licensed and ordained minister. Um, I am a carrier of the gospel. It is an honor and a pleasure um, to go and preach God's word. Um, I really believe that God has created me to improve the lives of others. So if I can share God's word where it can impact, positively impact the lives of others, I am in a really, really good place. Um, I am a minister. um, I am a motivational speaker. I am now an author, um, which has been a dream of mine for a very, very long time. Um, So I'm doing all of these great and wonderful things. But at the end of the day, I'm still just plain old Ashanti. Well, with all that being said, I just don't know how that is. You do so much. And if anyone hears that or if they're connected with you on social media, they're probably probably wondering, like, plain old Ashanti, where, where does that come <laughs> 
Where does that come from? Because your your lifestyle and your personality is generally not what somebody would think, you know, with plain or okay. old. Okay, well. That's <laughs> O-L. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Valencia, um, I, I just know that in order for me to continue um, to go to higher heights, that I have to um, be humble um, and not get caught up in, you know, all of the things that's going on. You know, it, it really is exciting, but the truth of the matter is it is so easy to get caught up in the hype of it all. And I need to stay grounded um, so that I can stay focused. And I won't allow myself to exalt me. Um, I won't allow people to exalt me. Um, God is the only one that will lift me, and he'll do that in his own time and in his own will. Um, So the best thing for me to do is to remain very, very humble. And the things that he's done for me and, and done through me, yes, I am absolutely grateful. I'm in awe. I'm excited about it. And it is good stuff. You know what I'm saying? But my soul yeah. boasts in the Lord. So I get excited about him. So all of these things that are happening, I can't look at me. I can't look at Ashanti. So I have to make sure that, that I understand that all of the glory goes to him, you know. It's from him for that I receive all of these great and wonderful and perfect blessings and gifts. I have to make sure that I never get caught up in the whole hype of it all. Hmm. You you just brought along a whole other show. Because <laughs> oh the goodness. reason why I say that is because um, – I I love that, and we, you know, let's just be honest, we see people um, praise themselves too much, I I guess. Yeah, I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but, I mean, the truth is the light. Um, Praise themselves, and then they give God the credit after the fact, you know, um, and then – you know, it, it's so much to be said about everything you just said, but I definitely see a lot of people, they bask in the in the glory they get from others, mm-hmm. you know? You know something, and, the best thing I heard someone say years ago, they said, um, people will blow you up just to pop you. You have to be very, very careful about, yeah, allowing people to put you on a pedestal. Because if they have that much control where they can lift you up, those are the same people that will tear you completely down. So be very, very careful about um, praise from just mere mortals, human beings, you know. Mm. I learned a long time, you know, we know that um, people don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. So people shouldn't have that much control over your life. You know, it's really great to have support. It's great to have cheerleaders in your corner, but you better be very, very careful that you can discern whether the yays and the hoorays are truly, truly um, from the heart because everyone that's clapping, they're probably not really cheering for you. Mm, I love that. That That is the truth on so many levels, and um a lot of times, because I've had this experience, you know, especially when you're on social media and you're in this motivational space, uh, people will tend to put you on on a pedestal, so to speak, or people will tend to um, feel like they know you and like you're so this and so that. And I've had people, you know, um, post different things, and, you know, everybody loves a good compliment but you have to know where that line goes. I've had uh, pretty creepy inboxes. Um, I've had people try to call me through Facebook because they feel like they know you, like you are their, um, you know, like they they, people do put you on, on on a pedestal and feel like they know you and like you owe them something, so to speak. And it's crazy and it's, it's creepy. I've had. It's crazy. I don't. I don't know how else to to say it. And whereas I feel like, yeah, you should uh, compliment each other 
because I do know that sometimes when you're in this space, you can feel like everything you're doing is not, like, not moving. And sometimes, you know, I do believe God used other people to, to give you the words that you need to hear in, in that time. Those are my personal feelings. However, oh, yeah, we, do, we do have to be um, mindful of, you know, people putting us on a pedestal. And and us feeling like ah, I'm God, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. because you know humans, we we are some really peculiar creatures. Um, when it feels good when people say all of these great things about you, and when people kind of give you these compliments and they're cheering you on, and your flesh craves it. So you have to yeah. be very, very careful because it's easy. Even the strongest person, if, if they slip up, you can get kind of caught up in all of that. And the word tells us pride comes before fall. When you get to the point where you're so prideful or you're so self-centered, you got to be very, very careful because here yeah. comes the fall. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if, if people are honest, they've seen it happen. They've seen oh, absolutely. it. Yeah. You know, I've seen people that will make, as I say, the back of my throat itch. Um, (laughs) So I'm like, oh, they kind of got like a a big head or really, I don't know, there's certain words for it. Um, But, and then all of a sudden they disappear because they suffered some, something, you know, that fall, you know. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it happen and I'm always, mindful, and that's why I, one of the things I tell people, this is all God and not me, because I am a very, uh, you know, I don't want to say I'm a I'm a selfish person, but, you know, we are flesh, you know. We are. And, and, and if it wasn't for my purpose and the push for me to even walk in my purpose, you know, I would be on the couch eating butter pecan ice cream, watching cartoons. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, and something that I that I want to um, say is, you know, in our flesh, our is is lazy. Let's just be honest. Oh yes, it is. Honest. Yes, it is. is. You're absolutely correct. We don't want to do anything. You know, right. it takes effort to. Um, to make intentional changes. It takes effort to um, push forward and get better and do better and have better. It takes effort, and we don't really want to do that. You know? Um, Yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. The flesh, you know, just wants to be lazy and, you know, um, I I don't know, um, you know, just content with being ineffective. Definitely, definitely. And I love the words you use because that kind of leads us into the actual quote-unquote interview portion of Define You Radio. I I say that, but y'all know how how I flow. Um, When we talk about intentional effort, now, I've been attached to you, it feels like forever, but it's (laughs) since last year, beginning of this year, last year. No, I um, I, I think we're close to two years now. What we got to have an anniversary, uh, something or another. <laughs> but um, absolutely, so, I, I have personally, personally watched you blossom. There's no other words. So when you think about your life, and I and I'm pretty sure you could feel that. I'm pretty sure you could feel your growth, especially within the last two years. Even though behind the scenes you were doing the work, but as far as you know, from a outsider perspective I've seen it so do you do you feel like you have created the life you wanted like two years ago you wanted it and and you intentionally created it okay uh well honestly Valencia um you know there are times when you have these visions and you feel that, um, okay, I have this vision, and I'm really not sure 
um, when all of these things are going to come to fruition, you know, the, yeah. these things, these promises start to manifest um, because you know what you saw. You know what you um, were shown, and it just seems like it's not happening. It had gotten to the point where I was, um, I was getting a little frustrated. Um, because, you know, I know what the vision is and I know what the promise is and I, I know what my gifts are and I know my skill sets and I'm thinking, what in the world is happening? Until I guess it's been about four or five weeks ago, someone told me something, um, and it's just interesting how God works. Someone told me something, and I had never heard this before. Um, he said, Ashanti, he said, um, basically what you were experiencing was the thrust drag uh, phenomenon you know how it is when when you are um, you're taking flight and the plane is taking off the plane yeah. thrusts forward but what happens to your body you drag your body back. Jerks. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. your body jerks back well I was taking off all the time but I was feeling the drag, I was feeling the, the holding back, but what I didn't realize was non-movement, I was actually moving. I was actually moving. I was just feeling the drag of it, that the frustration was the drag. So I was getting frustrated because I felt like I wasn't moving far enough, fast enough. Mm. But God knew exactly how fast and how far he wanted to take me and when that was to happen. So I was focused on the wrong thing. I should have just been concentrating on just moving, period. So, yes, I've been moving all along. You know, it's, it's kind of like that whole um, seed um, germinating kind of theory. You know, the seed is just going through all of these stages underground, and then when it breaks forth, everyone's like, oh, wow, it's a, it's a plant. It's a flower. Right. Well, what you don't know is something has been happening all along. And what people don't realize is, you know, I, I've been a minister and a motivational speaker and a workshop presenter and a facilitator and a mentor. I've been doing all of these things for two decades, hmm. for two decades. And God just kind of kept me under his wing of protection. You know, there were times when, when you know, I would have um, speaking engagements and I would have events here and there, but they seemed so few and far between. Well, now um, I'm in a season of acceleration, and it seems to a lot of people that, wow, where did she just come from? No, I've always been here. I've always been here. But God has his own timing, and he has his his own way and his own will, and I just had to learn how to be patient and learn how to trust him because, honestly, we were talking about flesh. Flesh is very impatient. I wanted God to go on and give me, just go on and show it to me now. You know, you you promised me this. You showed me this. Come on, just bring it to the forefront. And he, he had to let me understand that, you know, it's just not time right now. I probably would have wasted a gift if I would have been premature in coming forward, you know. I could have hurt someone if I came forward too soon and did not know how to properly use my gift. If I didn't have the people skills, if I didn't have um, consideration for others, if, you know, if, if I wasn't humble, you know, if, if there are some things that you have to learn in order to be able to handle your gifts, those gifts are your gifts, no doubt about it. They are what they are. But you have to be able to handle them properly in order for them to be effective for one you as others. Because if you're going around just hurting people with your arrogance and your insensitivity and your impatience and rudeness and all of these ugly things, what good is the gift if you're not going to help anyone? Mm. Does that make sense? You've just No, you've just said, like, so many things, um, and it's so, so true. And, and I remember either doing a, a video or – something of that nature, and I said, um, you know, people are just paying attention, but I've been here. I'm 40. I've, I've been here since 90, since 77. Um, right, right. But what, you know, what I've, what I've learned in, in my time, and I'm still growing, is that it was some things that God needed to deal with me on because I was still uh, 
walking in anger, I'm going to show them, you, you know, like real talk. Um, mm-hmm. and, and as long as showing them was my motivation to doing something with my life, I didn't move. And oh, yeah. I had to realize oh, yeah. that uh, I have nothing to prove to anybody. And it's not about right. that. It's not about showing them. It's about helping those. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know. Um, it's and interesting I had that to, you bring, had, bring up. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you go ahead. You go ahead. Well, it's interesting that you bring up um, that you have been able to identify what was holding you back for a period of time because I know exactly what was holding me back um, in some ways. Um, I've had trust issues for many, many years. Um, There have been so much hurt in my past um, from people that were really, really close to me. Um, So when I got to the point where I was holding on and harboring those hurt feelings, um, I think it really put me in a position where I had built a wall around myself. And let's be honest, how can I encourage anyone or empower anyone if I have a wall around me? I wasn't letting anyone in because of these trust issues I was having. So I had to learn how to make myself vulnerable. Yeah, we do have to have a lot of common sense. You got it. You, God doesn't make us to be fools now. You do have to have mm-hmm. common sense, and there are some things that you need to do to protect yourself. But I had gotten to the point where I said, you know what, I'm sick of people abandoning me. I'm sick of people hurting me. I'm sick of people lying to me. I'm sick of people from me. And, you know, all of these things, those, those things really did happen. But I started building this protective shell. And when I built that shell, I had made myself kind of go into, I, I basically became a recluse, so to speak, in plain sight where yeah. I wasn't letting anyone in, but how could I help anyone in that condition? Mm. You know? So true. I'm just, I'm listening and just loving everything you're saying, and that's why I call the show Classes in Session, because y'all know my pen and paper is busy. I'm definitely taking notes, um, And I think, you know, my personal feelings um, is that for a season we do have to be, we are covered and and really protected and hidden for a reason because there's some things that we have to do um, with ourselves and and some people we are protected from and things we're protected from. Yes. Yes. and I could see it in 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 my in definitely in my own life. And if everybody takes time out to think about their life when they think, okay, well, God, I was ready five years ago. No, you weren't. <laughs> if we're honest, if Let's we're be honest. honest, that's right. <laughs> um, hashtag TBH, <laughs> like the youngsters say. Um, to be honest, and I don't know if you if you listen to uh, John Gray. Any Pastor John Gray, but yeah. one of the things he said that hit home, uh, he said so much that hit that hits home. Um, but one of the things that he he said that hit home, he said the from your anointing to your announcement, that area in between is is basically your process. That's your strength oh, period. Wow. You know, because I've been writing somebody. You know, and we need to think about that. So you may have been anointed or blessed with these phenomenal gifts. Truly, I've been writing since a little girl, but I'm just now being recognized as a writer. What did I have to learn in between that time? Wow. So that's that's a a mic dropping moment. But it's your. But you can't drop the mic. Your story. (laughs) Yeah, and that reminds me of of, of David um, from the Bible, King David. Yeah. He was anointed years before he yes. took the throne. Yeah. Wow. I think, that's incredible. I think a lot of people don't realize that, though. Um, and I know that's something that I recently 
learn because, you know, the the Bible stories and everything you know kind of get mixed up in your head. You don't think about the time line. Sure. And yeah, that's absolutely right. How would that feel to know, okay, you're, you are anointed, you are going to be king in your in, – in, Okay, year one, not happening. Year, month two, you know, he's still tending sheep and so on and so forth. But hold on, Lord, you said, (laughs) (laughs) you know, I'm still fooling with these sheep. What's really going on? Um, Absolutely. That's like a whole other show. I definitely, um, definitely, because I think people don't understand that, and that's where people lose uh, their patience, they lose their fight, they lose their motivation, that in-between time, you know. Um, so when you think about your in-between time or when you think about someone creating the life they want, so to speak, what are what are some steps or some principles to doing, doing that? Well, honestly, um, Valencio, one of the things that um, I've been doing is to – Make sure that um, I am speaking life over myself um, because I've gone so long um, speaking negativity. And when you, whatever you speak, when once that hits the atmosphere, that thing comes and finds you. So when you start talking negative or what you won't have and what you can't do and you, you know you've never been able to do, once you start talking like that. Those kinds of situations and experiences, they tend to find you, and you get stuck in that rut. So I said, okay, we're going to reverse this curse, okay? So instead of being all gloom and glum and all downtrodden, let's see if we can flip this thing around, because I already know what it feels like to be depressed, okay? So let's see if I can flip it around. So I just started speaking words of affirmation over myself, and I, because I didn't know what good to say, I just started speaking the word over myself. And um, mm. so I started speaking affirmations. I spoke what God said about me because I didn't have enough common sense to speak anything good over myself because I was speaking all doom and gloom, you know. So I would say, um, you know, I would identify myself. Who am I, you know? I am I'm a child of the most high God. You know, I, I'm the head and not the tail. I am more than a conqueror. See, these are the things that God said about me. And if God says it, it has to be true because he's not a man that he shall lie, okay? And I trust him with my life. I trust him with my eternity. So whatever God said about me, i got to believe that, okay? So I go from all of this, these I am statements, I say them over and over and over again until it becomes a part of me, until I internalize it. I've, I've become it. Um, so then I start moving on, on to the things that, you know, my resources. What do I have? I think about Moses when Moses was at, when Moses was at, the, um, at the Red Sea and he was, he was um, you know, the um, Pharaoh's army was hot, hot pursuit. When um, when they were at the Red Sea, they were trying to cross, they were trying to break free, and he was anxious, so to speak, frustrated, thinking, okay, what do I do now? I have this massive body of water and this army coming. What am I going to do with all of these people? And God just told him or asked him, Moses, what's in your hand? Valencia, mm-hmm. I have everything that God wants me to have. I have everything that I need to be effective, to be successful, to progress, to make a positive impact in my life and my family's life and the lives of others. I have everything that I need. And so I speak the word over myself. What do you have, Ashanti? What are your resources? What are your connections? I have all of my needs met according to to God's riches and glory. I have that. I have God's undivided attention. So all of the things that's happening in this world, guess what? I serve a God that's so big that he can pay attention to you, Valencia, someone across the the world in London, someone in Africa. He has all of our best interests at heart. But guess what? I am fully aware that I have his undivided attention. And because I have his attention, I have his heart. 
Because I have his attention, I know his mind is on me. And because I have God, I know I have everything that I need to do whatever I need to do. So I have to start speaking those things over myself. So I know who I am, and I know what I have. So now here's where Ashanti has to get real. This is where the rubber hits the road. What can you do, Ashanti? Because we already talked about being lazy. The flesh just, you know, wants to be content with just being insignificant and ineffective. Start talking about your competency. What can you do? I can do all things through Christ. I really believe that I'm a mountain mover, Valencia. I believe that I have the supernatural powers to move a mountain. I can say to a mountain, get thee out of my way, and guess what? It has to move. I believe that I have enough faith that I can walk on water. I'm a water-walking soldier. I need you to understand that. See, I believe that I can do whatever God says that I can do. He said that same spirit that is working in him, and see, we serve a God that is absolutely amazing. When I say incredible, I'm talking about bad to the bone. We serve a God that is unlike any entity or any person or any situation that you've ever been in. We serve this God who is so bad, he can speak a thing into existence. See, before the foundations of the earth, he just started speaking, and guess what happened? Those things started showing up. And when they showed up, he called that thing good. And he said the same spirit that operates inside of him is the same spirit that's inside of me, the same spirit that's inside of you. And every listener that is connected to this call on tonight, whatever it is that you want, you can call that thing and it'll happen. You can create the life that you want to have. You don't have to be stuck in a situation. It doesn't matter what your mama went through. It doesn't matter if your daddy was present. It doesn't matter what your bank account looks like. It has absolutely nothing to do with your circumstances. What do you want? Have enough, you know, oomph about you to vocalize it. Because once you say it, I can do, even if you don't think you have enough, even if you don't think there's enough resources, Say that you can do it, and guess what? It has to happen. So that's, mm. those are the things that I started doing to, you know, speaking those affirmations over myself because I didn't know what to say, but I know what God said, so I repeated what he said. You can't go wrong with a uh, with God that can't lie. You can't go wrong with a God who has a track record that has never failed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. This is a God who is absolutely immaculate. He's perfect in all his ways. And he wants you to have a fantastic life. Yes, he's preparing a place for us in heaven right now. But, no, he wants you to have life, you know, that is full and, 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 and just good. Like, I'm talking Campbell's soup good. Mm, mm, good. He wants you to have a good life right now. That's the kind of God I serve. So if he says, Ashanti, you are this, you have this, you can do this, I believe it. And once I started speaking the positive affirmations over my own life, using the word of God, things start changing. Things start turning around. And you know what? I'm unstoppable because God hmm. told me that I can have whatever I want. I can have, I can, I can do whatever I want to do, be whoever I want to be, because I have favor. I have his grace. I have his mercy. I have his protection. I have his provision. It has absolutely nothing to do with my past. You know, I, greater is ahead of me. And you know what? I want all of it. What God has for me, I want every last bit of it. I don't want my, my, my gifts and, and, and my skill sets. I don't want those things to die with me. I want to use them right now. Hmm. So I'm going to speak positivity because I need to build myself up so that I can be useful right here in the land. I want to be useful. Who wants to just, you know, exist and, and have no purpose? There are people wandering around all over. They're searching for purpose. You already know what your purpose is if you look within you. God has given you everything that you need, every single thing that you need to be effective, to have a full life, intentional, unapologetic, and I mean really, really thriving. So we're supposed to be having, you know, just a really good life. You know, so many times we used to hear things like if you're saved, you know, you're supposed to have such a, this kind of right. lowly 
lowly like the devil is a lie. My father is the king of kings. And if he's the king of kings, that means I'm a princess. And darling, I want every gift my daddy got for me. <laughs> there go that Mississippi. That go there that it Mississippi. Is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I, I was waiting I was waiting to hear hear that uh Mississippi. You have there spoken a word over so many lives. Um with everything that you just said, so powerful and number one, true. Oh, but let's awesome. just be oh, honest God. about uh, people. Did you find when you started to to speak into yourself and started growing into this the person God wanted you to be? Did you start losing people? How did the people around you react to? You're uncovering, so to speak. <laughs> Are we really going to do this right now, Valencia? <laughs> uh, yes, ma'am. Hashtag we're live. <laughs> Hashtag, Hashtag we are live. Listen, people that told me that they were going to always be down for me, they took off. I have people that um, that I trusted. You know, it was – if I actually trusted a person, that meant my heart was all the way in it. And people that I really um, thought cared, truly cared for me, when when God um, kind of pushed me, you know, catapulted me forward, um, they got really angry with me, you know. Mm. There, were, there are actually some people, and God gives us the spirit of discernment, or, you know, that is one of the gifts, Um God has also shown me that there are some people that are still hanging around now that are not very, very happy with me. Mm. There are some people that have some Say serious it. issues, Say you know. Say a long time for the people in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, there are some people that are just hanging around um, because they still want to be connected. People want to be connected to your anointing. They want to be able to take um, – ownership and they want to benefit from the blessings that um, come with being connected to you, but they may not be happy for you. See, everyone that's hanging around is not your cheerleader. Um, when when Jesus was walking around in full-fledged uh, ministry, you have to understand that everyone that was in his general vicinity, they weren't just the ones that were there um, to get a word from him. You know, you have people there that that um that that wanted to wanted to be there because they supported Jesus. There were people there because they were believers. There were people there because they were curious, but there were also people there because they hated him. They wanted to be there. They had to be there. They hated him. So they were always around. And I used to say, okay, you know, you know the kids were saying, you know, put your hater blockers on and block your haters. Yeah. No, 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 dear. The word says he prepares a table before us in the presence of our mm. enemies. Sometimes we block our own blessings when we block the haters because some of your blessings the haters need to see. See, the enemies need to show up to know that God is God. The word of God tells us every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And see, everyone has to know that God is God, even the devil in hell and all of his imps and demons. They all know that God is God. So if there are any haters or enemies, so you can't put a lot of energy in that. You know, let them come. Let them come. Let them see how good God is. See, mm. you know, they can either get with this or they can get with that. It really doesn't matter. It's not even your business, you know, why they are around. But just pay attention. And you, you smile and, and, and you do what God has called you to do, but everyone is not always going to cheer for you. But what you have to do is, and this is one of the lessons I learned, my best friend, my best friend in the world, he told me one time um, when I would get frustrated sometimes when people would say, well, Shanti, I'm coming to this event and I'll show up, because they always say that. I'm coming, yeah. I'm coming, I'll be there, I promise I'll be there, and they never show up. And it never fails. About 10 minutes before I am to go on, my phone starts blowing up with, with text messages and calls and, you know, all of these different things um, saying, oh, I'm sorry, I can't be there. And I would get so hurt that these people kept saying that, you know, that they would come and then they would never come. You know what he told me? Right. He said, Ashanti, what about us that always show up? Mm. 
You're focusing on the ones who never come, but the ones who are here for you, you aren't doing anything to show your appreciation for that. Look around. Look at the people. I don't care if they never come. You have this core group of people that always show up, but you're complaining about who didn't come. How do you think that makes everyone who is a true supporter feel? True. I had to learn how to change things around, and that's one of those things I think God really worked. He really worked on me when I was still buried, you know, underground, when I was still that seed germinating. He had to work on me where my focus could get right, where my mindset could get right, you know. He had to really, really work on me because, you know, we're so twisted. We we don't think straight, and we don't have the right motives all the time, and honestly, I was giving more energy to people who didn't care or who hated me. That's mm, insanity. True. That is insanity. So God had to turn it around for me. And that's why I love the fact that he does put people in your life who give you those reality checks. And you just have to be humble enough to receive it. I had to learn humility. You know? Mm. You hit so many points. I'm going back to the hater blockers first. Uh, (laughs) Because you are the second person that have said something um, similar as far as that. Because I'm like, Lord, y'all just pray for me. Because I'm one of those people, like, when when I cut you, when that discernment, I think my discernment is 10 plus 100. And and when I can't deny the hate, oh, I'm a I'm gonna block you three ways to Sunday like you never existed. But somebody else, uh, in fact, when I was in New York, and me and a young lady was having a conversation just about a situation that happened in her life, and I was saying how you know I I will you will have no access. I will block you. Tell everybody who. You know, my son, if you're friends with my son and my husband, they're going to block you like you're not going to exist anymore. And she said that same thing that, no, you're not supposed to because they're supposed to see. They are. I really believe that. They so, are supposed to see. And, and we have to make sure that we're humble, that we're not saying, you know, like, now, take that, you know. Um, but we, we do it in such a graceful way, just let God be God. And they'll see his glory. So we can't get caught up in boasting and kind of throwing it back in their faces, you know. It's, it's right. really, it's, it's not our business. It's, it's not our business right. how God deals with them. So either they're, they're going to do one of two things. Either they're going to, um, you know, kind of come around and, and be a better person. Or they're going to completely remove themselves, you know, move themselves out of your life. Um, and that takes any type of um, guilt or, or shame off of you, you know. You can't control what right. other people do. You can only control yourself. But we also right. can't put ourselves in a situation where um, we have to answer to, you know, what we may have done to hurt somebody. You understand right. what I'm saying? So we have to be very I- careful because – God is, you know, he's going to judge us on the things that we've done, and we don't want to be the reason why somebody turned away from him. And if it takes them seeing his glory on our life, lives, that may be the thing that turned them around, you know. So we don't, we don't have the luxury of picking and choosing who we're going to share God's gifts with or, you know, we can't cut people out of our lives. Although we want to, the flesh wants to just say, be gone, mm. you know. I was making Especially a list. Especially when they hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> making a list and checking it twice, huh? <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was Santa Claus in my list, like, okay, I'm about to, un, you know. But being that this is the second, what you just said also is the second time I heard that today. Uh, so I will say this for future reference, I won't block people. I'm not about to unblock people, but I just won't block any anymore because I do understand, like, what you're saying 100%. Um, 
things that happen when you have a ordained minister on the show. <laughs> That's all I can say. That's it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, you are <laughs> one of one that. of the most. Yeah, I just I. Okay, Lord, I hear you. Jeez. <laughs> you know, sometimes that's all you can say because I am my my when when you um the thing about discernment, right? And and I'm sure a lot of listeners can agree, and I'd love to hear your thoughts about that. Um, you see a lot of to me, you see more and you feel more, oh, and it's sure. not necessarily always good. So now you're starting to recognize certain things in 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 people and places you go and in, in in you're starting to recognize a whole lot. It's like putting on a fresh pair of contacts. And it's not oh, always yes. good. Oh, yes. your your flesh reacts like, Oh, I'm gonna tell her off then block her or maybe it's just my flesh. <laughs> you know what, honestly, if we can just absolutely be real, um Yeah. There, there have been some people that have really, really hurt me. I've gone through, um, you know, even in the season of acceleration and all of these great things are happening to me and through me, um, but so many um, situations have come up and I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, you know, all of these roadblocks and all of these snares and all of these kind of kinds of things. So my feelings have really, really been hurt a lot over yeah. the last six weeks. Over the last six weeks, mm. and and I'm thinking, God, what is happening? I I know you got me, but I I just don't understand. And there have been some people that have done some things that um where they have, they have definitely been trying to sabotage a lot of the wow. things uh, in my life, and I don't want to have any parts of it. I don't want to deal with them. And you know, my flesh tells me, just be done. You know, act yeah. as if they don't even exist. And, you know, yeah. and, and God deals with me, and I'm thinking, okay, we have this close relationship. You know, we're close like that. Um, yeah. And he, you know, he lets me know, you know, Ashanti, no, you can't do this like this. You know, he, he literally tells me what I cannot do, and I don't always think it's the right answer. I don't right. always think it's the right answer, but I know he is the right answer because my flesh, sometimes I want to tell him off. You know, yeah. <laughs> but he tells me, God has a way of telling me to shut my mouth. You know, I, mm-hmm. I have a mouth on me. My mouth is my money maker, and you know, as much as I can speak a good and and positive thing, if I get you know kind of pushed, you know, you kind of want to come out swinging, and and that kind of provokes you to say. Yeah. Other things, you really want to, you know, say what you really feel, and God literally arrests me, and he'll tell me to shut my mouth. And I don't want to shut my mouth, but I have to be obedient. I have to be obedient because I trust that he knows exactly what he's doing. And I I learned a long time ago, and this is is one of my mottos. I just had to say it over and over again. You know, I said, you know what, I don't know what God is doing. I really don't. I, I, I have no idea what God is doing. But that's none of my business. That's none of my mm. business what God is doing. My business is to know that God knows what he's doing. That's all I need to concentrate on. I need to make sure that I understand that he has full custody, care, and control over my life. He has authority. He is sovereign. And it may not feel good, smell good, or look good, but I know that all things work together for good. And what the enemy meant for evil, that's also good. So I always win. I'm a winner, baby. Mm-hmm. I get the victory every single time, even if it hurts right now, even if right. it makes me cry right now, even if it's absolutely scary right now. I get the victory. I win every single time. Mm. And that's how you create the life you want. That kind of brings the the, the thing um, full circle, as I say. Um, absolutely. Is, Absolutely. Is that, wow, that hour goes by fast. We have like six minutes. Um, so I want to <laughs> ask you, because I do believe, you know, it, I know everything we talked about, the, these are things that we need to deal with in, internally because 
in order to write the vision and make it plain, you have to be able to have your your head and your heart in the right place to write the vision that's for you. You you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, in order right. to to really go go forward, that's one of the things. Sometimes we have to check ourselves. I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm, I know I'm growing because there's been times I have typed out a text or or a inbox or whatever else, like just going in how uh, the old Valencia would. And mm-hmm. and something just was like, nope, don't send it, don't send it, don't send it. But my flesh, baby, when that flesh fights you, yeah. I and said, Lord. Valencia, <laughs> the word tells us that we have to die to self daily. It is so yeah. easy to come out of character. It really is, even for the best of us. It doesn't matter how long you've been on your journey. It doesn't matter how 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 close of a relationship you have with God. If you're not careful, if you yeah. allow people and, and situations to rub you the wrong way, you can easily slip out of character. And then now you've got to pick up the pieces because you're, you'll be the one who um, people are – confused about, you know, that person may have offended you, but when you step out of character, people are going to question your gifts. They're going to question your effectiveness because they're going to think, you know, you get that whole, and she's supposed to be a Christian, or, wow, I can't believe she did this, but they won't say anything, you know, about what caused your reaction, but people hold you, you know, at, at such a standard, because you are the standard. And people are expecting you to react and carry yourself in a manner that, you know, is above the foolishness, so to speak. So, yeah, that means you have to stretch a little a little further. You have to press a little harder. And you have to do some things that you really don't want to do. You know, you have to talk yourself off the ledge when you really want to go all the way off, you know? Mm. Are all the way in. That's it. it. I'm I'm working on it, guys. Oh my goodness, <laughs> Ashanti. Huh? It uh, this was like a private conversation uh, that the <laughs> audience has been uh, privy to. I hope you guys have in, in definitely enjoyed it. What I promise you is that you will definitely hear Ashanti back in 2018. Um, she has so much wisdom, and she's and and she's so humble. And I'm talking about you like you're not on the line, but you you understand. <laughs> you you amaze me, and I tell people, you know, I give, you know, I everybody deserves a compliment, but certain compliments are for certain people. If that Amen. makes sense in my own Valencia way. Um, oh, I understand. Ashanti. You can't just throw them around, <laughs> right? I want to throw compliments around people. Hey, get big because they didn't, you know, that's a whole other <laughs> show. But there it is. Three minutes <laughs> uh, left. And I want to know what, um, I know you have some book projects and you have so much stuff going on. How can, what do you have like coming up and how can the audience get in touch with you and feel some of your fire and just learn more about who you are, what you do, what you got going on, because we definitely want to stay attached to Ashanti. Okay, cool beans. <laughs> Listen, guys, um, I have so many projects coming out. Um, again, I am in this season of acceleration, and I am absolutely excited about it. And I want you to join me on my journey, and I'll join you on yours. But some of the things that I have coming out in the month of December, I'm being featured in the inaugural edition of Brilliant Awakening Magazine. I am so excited about that. I have a four-page spread where I tell a little bit of my story, um, the ups and downs, ins and outs. Um, It'll give you a little bit of background of how I became um, the Ashanti that you're coming to know. Um, So I'm really excited about that, and you can Find um, the link on my social media, um, you know, platforms, and I'll give you that information in just a little bit. Um, another thing that I've done is I have collaborated with, um, well, that that magazine project was um, a collaboration with the editor in chief, 
Paula McDade. She is an absolute diamond. She is such a beautiful, beautiful spirit. Um, so I've, I've gleaned so much from just being connected to her. Um, the next project I have been connected to is an anthology. Um, I am a contributing writer for Unapologetically Winning. You guys, I love that title, you know, um, yeah. un- because I am. I'm winning, and I ain't sorry. <laughs> Okay, I'm winning. <laughs> I ain't sorry about it either, you know. So I'm unapologetic about it, but I am so excited. Um, and I want you all to absolutely, um, you know, contact me to purchase that book, Unapologetically Winning. It is a story about or stories about overcoming adversity and taking action. And there are so many of my sisters that are part of this. Um, this anthology, Valencia being one of the um, premier writers on the um, the book project, but it comes under the umbrella of um, Unapologetically Winning by Monique Denton Davis, another phenomenal powerhouse. You guys, when God puts you together with some, some dynamos, yeah. he just does it right. So um, another project I have coming out, it's another anthology, it's um, entitled um, Living Out Loud. I love that title. These titles are yeah. like literally threaded into my, um, my life, life. Yeah. brilliant awakening, unapologetically winning, living out loud, you know. So, I, you know, I have, I have a couple of other things that are, are coming up in 2018, so I'm super, super excited. I'm writing for some other magazines. Um, they're not yet solidified. Um, I'm waiting on some confirmations, but I cannot wait to share with you um, the other book projects and the other magazine um, features that are coming out. I have um, a, a few other um, satellite radio interviews coming out, um, and, of course, I'll be posting those um, when you're connecting with me um, so you can kind of keep track and, um, and stay tuned and, and kind of, you know, just cheer me on because, you know, even leaders need to be encouraged, you know. Yeah. Even leaders yeah. need to be empowered. So um, I, I want to share something with you guys before I tell you about my, uh, my contact information. And this is one thing I want people to know. Um, you know, if I can, I, you know, I'm a minister, but um, I, I listen to all um, types of music. And yeah. um, there is this song um, by Neo. Um, you guys know, you know, Neo, the, um, he's an R&B singer. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. He made a song years ago, and the rapper Fabulous, he, um, he I think it was, no, 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 no. Fabulous is the artist, and Neo sung the hook. And what he says um, is so important. Um, It it really does sum up how I um, look at my tribe or the people that that undergird me, the people that fortify me. Um, He says, I'm a movement Movement by myself, myself. Ah, but I'm a force. When we're yes. together, I'm good all by myself, but you, yeah. you make me better. So for all of the people that are showing all of this love and all of this support and, and all of this undergirding and, you know, all of these things that that make you feel, you know, comfortable and competent and confident, those people that pour into your life and so into your life, you guys, I'm so, so appreciative, and I'm so, so humble, and I know exactly what you do for me to be able to continue on in this great work. So bless you, bless you, bless you. Please know that I love you, and I absolutely just, oh, my goodness, I bask in all of the support that you give me. So I want you to keep supporting. Um, so how can you get in contact with me um, for for um more interviews and more projects and collaborations and, and even for um, speaking engagements, you can send me an email to Ashanti Barnes or Ashanti.Barnes at gmail.com. That's Ashanti.Barnes at gmail.com. You can find me on most of the social media um, platforms. I'm on Facebook as Ashanti Barnes. Um, I am on Twitter as Ashanti underscore underscore Barnes. 
I'm on Instagram as Ashanti underscore underscore Barnes and LinkedIn as Ashanti Barnes. So if you search my name or just find me on one of those social media platforms, it will link you to all of the others. And um, you know what? When all else fails, if you're connected to Valencia, you're connected to me. So if you need to find me, go through my sister, um, this wonderful woman. Let me tell you guys something. I have so much respect for this woman. I have the utmost respect and admiration for this jewel, this this lovely and brilliant and incredible and amazing woman who is so selfless. She is so sharing and so giving. She just gives and gives and gives of herself. And, you guys, I learned so much from her, and I, I received so much from her, and her energy is is electrifying, and, and it really does fuel my fire. And I look forward to connecting with her on a daily basis, you know, however we connect. There's so many ways that we connect. Um because I know I'm going to get a nugget for the day. She's going to say something to inspire me. She'll give me something that will give me a little bit more power and a little bit more more courage, a little bit more strength. I'm, I'm just really, really thankful that iron really does sharpen iron. So, Valencia, I'm so glad that you gave me the opportunity. It is an opportunity that I am absolutely grateful for. Honored, yes but absolutely humbled to be a guest on your show on this evening. Thank you, and I love you. I mean, I had a quote, but uh, I think Ashanti just pretty much dropped the mic. Ashanti? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't have anything else to say except thank you so much. Um, okay. Yeah, she she pretty much dropped the mic, guys. So with that being said... <laughs> Pens and papers down. Class is officially over. <laughs> Have a great week. And remember, only you can define you. Connect with Define You Radio's Facebook page and connect with Ashanti. All her information, some of the nuggets she dropped tonight will be posted there. Guys, that's all I can say. 2018, um, y'all need to be ready so you don't have to get ready. Class is over. Thanks for listening to Define You Radio. Class is in session. Connect with the show at www.defineuradio.com. Pins and papers down. Class is over. A medium or larger Dunkin' Donuts hot chocolate is now $1.99. Enjoy original, Dunkachino, or the new Almond Joy flavored hot chocolate. Yeah, Almond Joy flavor. And enjoy all that chocolate deliciousness for $1.99. So go ahead, give yourself some hot chocolate happiness for $1.99. It's like a warm and fuzzy chocolatey hug. America runs on Dunkin'. Participation may vary, limited time offer. A medium or larger Dunkin' Donuts hot chocolate is now $1.99. Enjoy original, Dunkachino, or the new Almond Joy flavored hot chocolate. Yeah, Almond Joy flavor. And enjoy all that chocolate deliciousness for $1.99. So go ahead, give yourself some hot chocolate happiness for $1.99. It's like a warm and fuzzy chocolatey hug. America runs on Dunkin'. Participation may vary, limited time offer.